All right, everyone. Uh, this impromptu video today is going to be about the check engine light. I see a lot of posts all the time where someone will post, oh, my check engine light's on, what do I do? And then somebody in the comments will eventually say something like this. Oh, just take it to AutoZone and they can diagnose it. Well, it's true that a very small proportion of times, if you go to AutoZone, they can plug into your computer and they can pull the code to see what the code says. Now, what the code says doesn't automatically mean that's what's wrong with the car. The way this system works is there's a main computer that has wires connected to every sensor in your car, and that computer knows what the electrical input and output should be whether we're talking about volts or ohms or any of that madness. We're not going to get too deep into that, um, but let's just say you have a misfire code, a P0300, which is basically a multiple cylinder misfire or a random cylinder misfire. What do you do? Well, a lot of people will just say, oh, it needs a tune-up and replace the spark plugs and reset their code and take it for a drive and the code comes back. Why did it come back? Because it's, there's more than just basic tune-up things that can cause that code. So if you don't know how to diagnose systems in your car, then you're just going to end up throwing parts at it over and over again until the code disappears. Which is why shops have technicians that go to school and learn this stuff. They not only need to know the you know nuts and bolts and shit like that, they've also got to be able to understand electricity and currents and wiring diagrams and what a CAN bus does and all of that. So the statement, take it to AutoZone and they can diagnose it for you, is just a load of crap. One time in my history of working on vehicles and working for dealers, there's a code that I've seen that generally will lead you to replace the part and that will be the correct move and that is P0406 exhaust gas recirculation sensor voltage high um, in that the output voltage of the sensor that the computer reads is out of specifications so you know it's not a wiring problem because there's voltage going to and from the sensor and that eliminates it the only other part of that sensor is the sensor itself and that would need to be replaced so I've actually recently done this and that solves the problem but when you get a misfire code or something like that where it takes multiple phases of diagnosis to find a problem you're just not going to be able to look at a code and replace one part and call it a day and unfortunately with the way these modern car systems are it's very complicated to figure these things out that's why shops charge so much money to do it because that person has to actually learn stuff in order to do it getting back to the original code we talked about p0300 there's some other codes that could go along with that like p0301 which would indicate cylinder one misfire or p0302 which would indicate cylinder two misfire and so on if you've got a four cylinder car you can have four codes for each individual cylinder and you can have an extra one that says that there's a random or multiple cylinder misfire and there's a whole load of things that can cause misfires in cars a misfire essentially means that the fuel wasn't burnt properly um, and uh, the computer can pick up on that so anything from bad spark plugs to bad ignition coils or it could be in a, a, a spark plug wire that's got a tear in it that's arcing against a metal object when it's damp outside could be faulty fuel injector could be vacuum leaks even the mass airflow sensor when any of those things are failing the system gets information that it can't use and then therefore the system can't figure out timing and when to send fuel and all of that kind of thing so please for the love of god if someone says that their check engine light is on don't send them to AutoZone to have a code pull to replace a part it's just the wrong thing to do especially if you're on a budget most times it's less money to just take it to a shop have them diagnose the problem for you, get you an estimate, and then go from there. Now this script audio, I didn't write it. I just did this off the cuff. 
and I know it's pretty general and it doesn't get very specific about any one thing and it doesn't really answer any questions you might have about this stuff at all and that's basically because there's so many systems and so many ways these systems can fail that I just really can't get into it in a video like this however if you have a question about an engine code that's stored in your computer or a scenario you would like me to answer for you please let me know leave a comment or find me on Facebook or any of those other cool things I'm happy to explain things in deeper detail on a case-by-case -case basis in that I hope you all have a fantastic day take care